What's up everyone, welcome to part one of a new series where we look at the Movidius Neural Compute Stick. So what this thing is, is a VPU, a vision processing unit. And what it does is accelerates the performance of deep learning models. And what's great about it is it can be used for low power devices such as the Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. So in this series, we're gonna look at how to install the SDK on a host computer, how to build and compile models onto the stick, and how to deploy them onto a Raspberry Pi. So we've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. To begin, I wanna talk a little bit more about this thing. And the best way for me to describe it is to think of it as a tiny GPU. So let's imagine we've got a Raspberry Pi and we wanna run some deep learning model on it. Well, it's pretty much a no-go because those deep learning models are just too computationally intensive for the Raspberry Pi. But with this thing, we can plug it into our Raspberry Pi and we can actually run the deep learning model on the compute stick and we can get a pretty decent acceleration. So this thing enables us to run deep learning models on low power devices like a Raspberry Pi. If you'd like to learn more about this thing, you can come to the developer page. I'll add a link in the description, but there's some text describing it. There's a video. There's also a video from the Cold Fusion channel. But now what I wanna do is start working on the install. So what we're gonna be doing is installing the SDK onto our host computer. So let's jump into that. So you're probably thinking, wow, this thing sounds awesome. But at the same time, you're probably also wondering, how does this thing even work? Like, do I just plug it into my Raspberry Pi, click a button, and I get YOLO working? Or am I gonna be spending a bunch of time downloading packages, configuring packages, writing code, spending all this time just to get the most basic Hello TensorFlow code to work? Well, I think this diagram right here gives a good overview of the workflow. So we can think of it as two parts. We've got the development part and the deployment part. So the development part is gonna be done on a separate host PC. So this will be like our laptop or our desktop. And we're gonna be writing the models, training the models, tuning the models, getting our models to perform the way we want them to. Then once our models are ready, we're going to compile them. So we'll compile them onto the compute stick where we can then plug the compute stick into the Raspberry Pi and run the model. So remember two parts, there's gonna be the development on a separate host PC and the deployment on the Raspberry Pi. In theory, it is possible to do everything on the Raspberry Pi, but from what I've read online, it's better to do the development and training and all that stuff on a normal PC and then just do the deployment on the Raspberry Pi. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So now what I wanna do is start with setting everything up on our host PC. Like always, I prepared some slides with all the steps we're gonna be doing in this video. There'll be a link in the description where you can download them from my GitHub page. So, in order to install NCSDK, we gotta be running Ubuntu 16.04. It can't be 17, it can't be 18, it's gotta be 16. I've already tried with 18, it doesn't work. So, in order to do that, we're gonna be using the recommended method, which is to use VirtualBox and run a virtual machine within our OS. I'm gonna be demonstrating this with Linux, but VirtualBox works for Windows and Mac as well, and the install steps are pretty much all the same. Now let's talk about some of the requirements for our host PC to run VirtualBox. So we're gonna need some RAM to allocate to it. Ideally, your machine will have a total of eight gigabytes or more, so that way you can allocate four gigabytes for the virtual machine. Um, as far as storage goes, you should have at least 10 to 20 gigabytes of free storage that you can allocate. The more the better, but 20 should be plenty. Um, your PC should have USB 3, because that's what the compute stick uses. And you need at least a dual core CPU. You can't run virtualization without more than one core. And the more cores, the better. Now let's give a brief overview of all the steps. So step one, we're gonna download the Ubuntu 16.04 ISO file. Step two, we're gonna download VirtualBox and the extra package. Step three, we're gonna configure and install Ubuntu on the VM. And then step four, we're gonna install SC SDK on the VM and we're gonna build the example. So let's begin by downloading the ISO file because it's pretty big and it's gonna take some time to download. 
So you can just follow this link. It'll take you to this page here. And the one that we're going to use is the 64-bit desktop. So just click here. We'll save the file. Um, like I said, it's going to probably take a few minutes because it's so big. But while that's going, we can proceed to step number two and install the virtual box. So we're going to be installing virtual box um, just using terminal command. So I'm just going to pull up a terminal and we're just going to run these commands. sudo apt update, sudo apt install virtual box, and sudo apt install virtual box extension pack. So the first one, sudo apt update. That one out of the way. So we can see everything. And sudo apt install virtual box. Click yes to continue. Cool, that's done. And now we'll do sudo apt install virtual box dash ext dash Pack. This is an extension pack that allows us to enable USB devices and some other things. But basically, we're just going to agree, click OK, say we accept this terms. Cool, so that's done. Now what we need to do is add ourselves to a user group. That way we can share USD, USB devices through the virtual machine. So in order to do that, we're just going to run this here, this command here, sudo user mod dash a dash g dbox users and then this uh, dollar sign user. sudo user mod dash a dash capital G dbox users. So that's the user group, it's called vbox users dollar sign capital user. And we're done. So now that all that's set up, our virtual box is. Well, we have VirtualBox installed. Now what we need to do is install 16.04 to our virtual machine. And just a couple notes before we proceed. Um, in order for us to add ourselves to that new user group, we have to log out for it to take effect. So make sure you log out or restart before you start your virtual machine. And also, um, some BIOS, they don't have um, this virtualization enabled by default. So um, like on my ThinkPad, um, I had to go into my BIOS, go to the security tab, and enable this thing called VT um, virtualization. Um, basically, there was two options, and I enabled both of them. And you need to do that in order for it to work. On my main PC, I didn't have to enable it. It was all good. But on my ThinkPad, I did have to enable it. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, you'll get an error when you try and start the VM. It'll say, like, your VT is not enabled, check your BIOS. So just be aware of those two things. So now let's proceed. So now what we're gonna do is install Ubuntu to our VM and we're gonna need to configure the VM. So in order to do that, I, I listed all the steps, but it's best if you just watch me do it because um, yeah, I think visually it's just easier. I'm just gonna pull up my terminal again, type um, VirtualBox. And we should get this window here. So what we're going to do is click New. We're going to give it a name. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to call it Mark. The type is going to be Linux. And the version is going to be Ubuntu. So click Next. Now I need to specify the memory size. So I've got 32 gigs on my system. So I'm just going to give it um, about 8 gigabytes. I would say go for at least 4 um, the minimum really is two, but I would shoot for four. If you can allocate four, allocate four. If you can allocate more, uh, go for more. So that's our RAM. We're going to, for the hard disk, we're just going to select the default value to create a virtual hard disk. And we'll also keep this the same, VDI, virtual disk image. Click Next. Then we're going to do dynamically allocate. So instead of just having a chunk, which is just locked, as you use more memory or as you use more storage in the VM, it'll expand. So it's not like just taking up this chunk of unused data. So yeah, select uh, dynamically allocated. Then for the hard drive size, um, 10 is probably good. I'm just going to go with like uh, 57. Uh, I've got 256 on this hard drive, so there's plenty. So let's create it. 
So now we're not done configuring it. So now what we're going to do is go to settings and let's go to our system. So for the processor, instead of one CPU, uh, let's go, I'm going to go with four. Um, on my system, I've got 12 CPUs, so I can allocate four and be fine. Um, depending on how many cores you have will determine how many you can allocate. Um, One's the minimum. If you can do two or more, do more. So I'm just gonna go with four. That should be fine. Leave all this the same. And yeah, so now we're gonna go to storage. So here we're gonna specify the ISO file that we downloaded. So click empty and then click this button here. And now you can see that here are those ISO files we downloaded. Um, I've already downloaded it before, but so you can see I've got two versions of it, but just select the um, ISO file that you downloaded and click, well, yeah, so that's all set up. Now we're gonna go to USB. So we want to select USB 3 and yeah, so we'll just uh, click okay. So now everything's ready. So we can just click start and we'll go through the whole install Ubuntu process. All right, so I'll go ahead, click start. We'll get this little window that pops up. You always get these little errors saying, I don't know, auto capture keyboard. Those always pop up. You just click them to close them. I'm not sure how to get rid of them, but I haven't looked into it. But I'll look into it because they're getting annoying. And I'll probably kind of skip through a lot of this because it's just clicking next and password, nothing exciting. All right, so we'll install Ubuntu, download the updates while installing. Um, it's okay if you click this erase disk because it's just going to be, it's just using that bit of storage that we allocated. It's not gonna like wipe out our hard drive. So don't worry, click this one and install now. Click continue. Select your region. Your language keyboard, give it a name, go with Mark. Cool, it's done. So we just click this button to restart, and it's just going to restart the VM. We don't have to like shut down our whole computer. And you'll get this screen. Last time I got here, it just kind of froze. Not sure why. So I think I'm going to have to just close this thing. Yeah, power off the machine. Let's start it up again. All right, enter our password. Boom, here we are. We're in our virtual machine desktop. We've got a fresh install of Ubuntu 16.04. So now what we need to do is install the NC SDK. Now I'm gonna jump back over to the slides and proceed to step number four. So in order to install the NC SDK, we need to install Git, and then we're going to clone a repository, move into it, and call make install. So let's jump back over to the VM. Pull up a terminal and we'll call sudo app install git. Type in our password. Click yes to proceed. Cool, so that's done. So now shrink this a little bit just so I can see this line here. And we'll do git clone dash b nc sdk2 https slash slash github um no videos nc sdk cool that looks right all right we've got that so now what we can do is just move into that folder and we can just call make install. So we're just going to be running some make file. It's going to install everything. It's going to install the cafe, TensorFlow, OpenCV, Python packages, everything. And actually this is going to take a while. It takes, I don't know, maybe 10-15 minutes. 
So what I'm going to do is pause it, pick back up once it's done. And it's done. You should see installation is complete. If you didn't get that, then reasons why it failed for me before was because I tried running it with um, 18 and I got this like operating system invalid error. So um, you should get to here. So now that we've done that, what we need to do is actually build the example files. And in order to do that, we need to plug our um, neural compute stick into the computer. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I've got the stick plugged into the computer now. So I'm just going to go to devices, USB, and you'll see a list of all the devices. So the one I'm looking for is this Movidius one. I'm just going to check it. So now you can see, it should show, well, yeah, so basically it's checked. So it's, it's in there. So now what we need to do is we're going to call make examples. So now what it's going to do is just build the examples. So it's going to, I don't know, configure all these Python packages, set everything up in the example folder. So this one's also going to take a little bit of time to run. So I'm just going to pause it, pick back up once it's done. And real quick, one thing I forgot to mention in our um, settings, I forgot to say that we need to add a USB filter. And what this does is like it automatically recognizes the USB device when we start our VM. So what you'll do is you'll just click new. Um, basically you'll say plus. And then what you need to do is specify the vendor ID. The one it is, well, you can check what the vendor ID should be by um, check what this one is. 03E7. So that's what it's supposed to be. Um, if you don't have this filter specified, the, the make example will fail. So I had to go um, create that and then rerun make install. So, or sorry, make example. So that's what's running right now. And yeah, so it should pass as expected. Yeah, just one note, make sure you add that USB filter thing. So once this is done, I'll um, pick back up. All right, it's done. And it looks like it passes normally. So we've got the SDK built. We've got the example folder built. Um, I think I'm going to call it quits for this video. Um, it's already been getting, it's probably way too long as it is. But in the next one, we're going to try and run some of these examples, maybe compile some of the models and run them on the, on the Raspberry Pi. And in future ones, we'll, you know, try and do YOLO, maybe some other deep learning models. Not sure yet. We'll see as we go. But like always, if you've got any questions, leave them below or use the Discord server to chat more. Um, the slides will be available on my GitHub with a link in the description below. I'll also add a Amazon link to the Movidius um, compute stick where you can purchase one. And yeah, that's it. So if you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you really liked it, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.